When we're working in project, it's really important to understand the critical path. Now, the critical path is basically the longest sequence of tasks in a project. And the reason why these are so important is that any changes that are made to tasks that are part of the critical path have the ability to affect the project finish date. So they're really important. So first things first, how do we view which tasks are part of our critical path? Well, let's jump up to the Gantt chart format tab. And in the bar styles group, you can see we have a checkbox here for critical tasks. So let's select this. And what we should find is that the tasks in our project change color. Now I'm going to scroll down and I can see if I scroll across, I now have some tasks that are showing in red. So these tasks are part of my critical path. So if any of the durations change on these, it has the ability to change that project finish date. Basically, if one of these tasks is delayed, the entire project is going to be delayed. And tasks which are on the critical path basically don't have any slack. Notice if we go up to the Gantt chart format tab in the bar styles group, we have a little slack checkbox as well. And if we hover over it, it says show a line to represent slack. Slack, also known as float, shows how much a task can slip before it affects another task or the project finish date. So tasks on the critical path don't have any slack. So if we scroll up to some of these tasks which aren't on our critical path and turn on slack, you can see that we get these longer bars running out to the right hand side showing the slack for these tasks, basically how much they'd have to be delayed by in order for them to affect the project finish date. Whereas tasks on the critical path don't have any slack at all because any delay is going to affect that project finish date. Now, if we want to see this in a bit more detail, we can add a slack column into our task entry table. So I'm just going to insert a column just here so it's easy to see. Let's right click and insert column. And the column that we want to insert is total slack. Let's select it and let's take a look at what we have in here. Now, notice for these tasks at the top, some of these have slack. So I can see that send outline to training manager has five days of slack. Now, if I scroll down this schedule towards these critical path tasks, you'll see that those tasks that are on the critical path either have a total slack of zero days or they might have a negative number in here because those tasks have no slack because any change is going to delay the project. Now I'm going to go down to one of these tasks. Let's say send outline to training manager. That's currently a one day task. Now I'm going to increase this by quite a bit. So let's say that this is now going to be a seven day task. Now notice immediately this planning wizard pops up, warning me of a scheduling conflict. Now I'm just going to click continue to allow the scheduling conflict. But what we'll find if we scroll across is that because of this delay, that task has now been added to the critical path. You can see that the bar has changed color. And if we look in the total slack column, we now have minus one day of slack. So if you make changes to duration, so if we start to have delays on certain tasks, those will get added to that critical path. Now, I don't want to have this seven days. Let's take this back down to one day. And you can see it removes it from the critical path and the total slack again is five days. And the final thing to mention here when it comes to critical tasks is that we can filter and just see those critical tasks. So if we go back to view into our filters, one of the filters that we have is critical. So let's click it. And now we can see those tasks. If I just want to see the work tasks without the summary tasks in the way, remember, Gantt chart format, we can simply deselect summary tasks. And now those are the tasks on our critical path. If I scroll across, I should find that all of those have red bars in the timeline. Now I'm going to bring all my tasks back again. So let's go back to view and choose no filter. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe. So you get notified about similar videos we upload to see the full course that this video came from click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.